welcome everybody to one hour of miniature goodness. Today we have another fantastic box set. Well, I don't know if it's fantastic yet until I've opened it, but <laughs> it looks nice from the outside. Um, anyway, this is the box set. It's the Pools and Pillars set. Now, this is based on WizKids Games Warlock Tiles. Now, if you know about the Warlock Tiles, WizKids Games do a complete dungeon which is a pre-painted dungeon. Um, so luckily enough, we got a couple of items from their Warlock range that are unpainted. It would be really nice if they did um, the dungeons unpainted as well, because I'd probably purchase those dungeons. So uh, maybe we'll keep nagging WizKids games and they'll release the actual dungeons unpainted so I can paint them up as well as. Okay, let me say hello to everybody. We got my Scorpio, Michelle. Um, sorry to hear you're having a bit of a rough time, Michelle. I hope things get better soon. Tal's in the house. Hello, Tal. And Carlos is in the house. Oh, uh, excellent. All the goblins. Keep coming. Keep coming. Okay, so let's um, open this box today. Um, what I'm going to do is I've been looking at all the little pieces in here. Um, what I've decided to do is... Yes, evening, mate. <laughs> What I've decided to do is do a little bit of uh, crafting today with these because these are all terrain pieces. Um, but let's get it out of the box and see what we can work with first. I'm going to cut my fingers off on the, ch on the channel. There we go. I'll just show you the box work actually. I'll just show you what's in the box here. We've got four pillars, one fallen pillar, four banner accessories. Uh, four torch accessories, one deer head accessory, three small pools, one large pool, three large pool rock pieces, two large pool gargoyle statues, and one large pool brazier. So you've got quite a few different items in here. Um, so let's go and have a little closer look, see? Now this is the, like, the, the terrain pieces. So there's no particular, it can be used for Pathfinder or Dungeons and Dragons or any any game to be honest. Okay. Gonna have to excuse the scrunchy noises as I pull everything out of the box. They certainly know how to pack their parcels. <laughs> Hello, Gareth, are you? Um, I enjoyed watching your little um, Star Wars uh, Star Wars stream the other day, Gareth. Um, well done. Hello, Hamish. Okay, nearly there. Awesome stuff. Okay, let's zoom in. And get some focus. And there we go. So what we got here? 
is we've got some banners and these stick out these stick onto your pillars so you can have different banners stuck onto your pillars so you can paint them all up and have your little pillars with your, your different items on there with a stag's head on one of them Well, it's not in focus as well, is it? There we go. So, very nice little sculpts. I mean, for a little terrain set, these will do the job quite nicely. And we've got these little braziers we can put on there. They're very nice. So, you could use these for all sorts of things, It'd be dungeons, uh, ruined buildings, anything you like, really. Very nice. And of course we've got a little, like a rubble set. Now, I was looking at the rubble set, so what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to make um, a couple of little dioramas um, quickly to show you what we can use these items for. Um, these um, little pools, the little clear crystal pools, three of these. Now this is the main main large pool, and it comes with different uh, items you can place onto the pool. You got gargoyles, and you can actually change the gargoyles and add the rocks instead of. Uh, but I'm going to keep those gargoyles gargoyles on there. Yeah, so you got uh, two different variations you can change your pool and of course you got these little stands to put underneath your pillars as well so let's get these out of the way and what we'll do is I will make some little dioramas using these pieces so we'll move this one over here Um, and we'll definitely go for the gargoyles. So I'm going to put these little rocks over here and those over there. Let's get some focus. Now, what I've got here, I've got a couple of little MDF boards. Just little random ones from eBay. You buy them in little packs like 20, 25. So they make great scatter terrain. So what I might think of doing is getting some clay on here and we can make a couple of little clay bases yeah. make a couple of little clay bases with these little miniatures so what we need now is some clay what, I've, what I'm also going to use for today is I've got some trees from Mantic Games so they're going to help with one of the dioramas change this one here that one can go on there now my idea in my head when I was looking at the box was I'll have a little platform of rocks this will be on the top um, and then we could have a tree here a little tree there a little tree at the bottom um, and then of course uh, we can have the clay going up and working around and once that's dry it'll make a beautiful little diorama to add to your games on your tabletop so I will get my clay I'm just using air drying clay as always. I'll put my little blue gloves on. Now if you are making terrain, I mean this is a nice little set if you want some little added parts for your terrain. Uh, uh, they are really made for your dungeons. Uh, so you'd have all these little parts in the dungeons. But I'm going to make this one definitely outside. And this will be a little rubble terrain for outside as well. I just got some clay there. A 
<laughs> Remember to keep your clay nice and moist. Hi, Cheryl. Okay. Um, another thing I got as well, because I got lots of little goodies today to actually add to the bases. I got a little tub here. Now, I don't know if any of you have heard of Hearst Arts. Hearst Arts is um, an American company, and they are a mold maker. And you can make all these little bricks and things with, using their molds. And you've got some little crates and stuff. And I just use plaster of Paris. And I make little molds with these. And they're fantastic to add to any scatter terrain. So we're going to be using these today as well in our builds. But we'll start with the clay one first. And they both they both have clay, and it's a very simple task. All we need is a little bit of water to stick my little finger in. Got a little crafting knife, and we'll make a start. Now I want um, it quite high up because um, I want like a little staircase going up to it. Let's do this without my hands being in the way. And we're just flattening in down the clay. Air drying clay is fantastic to work with. We'll just use this as a scale. Once the air drying clay has dried, um, it will come away from the base. So every time you use air drying clay, just make sure you remember that you will have to stick it back on afterwards. Um, so today we just work on how we want our base to look. Now I want another layer. So we're going to double layer on top. Let's get this in camera. There we go. A bit better. A little bit more. We can just with the clay. We can just squish it on. Uh, this clay is uh, Fimo clay. It's a, a very nice quality air drying clay. Um, it's not too expensive as well, um, and it works fantastic for all your basing needs. As long as you don't put too much clay on a base, um, you won't have too much problems with it drying out or anything. So, just push that down a little bit more. So, we've got a nice little flat top there. I just want enough to add our. Okay, so we're just using we're just using the miniature as a reference, um, and of course we're going to have some little trees. So I want one up here. That one will be over here. So we're just working out where the different items are going to go on the little diorama. I'll push that one underneath there. And then we can start working our rocks around the base as well. <laughs> it's quite difficult with these little gloves, they keep on. Um, Sliding off my hands. <laughs> so we're just building up the base and we'll add a little bit here because we're going to convert those into like little stairs in a minute. A little bit more around the side here. Once this is all dry, of course, I'll, I'll re-stick it back onto the base. Um, and then um, I'll add some gravel and it will be all flocked, added some grass and some leaves. But what we're doing here is just, I'm just showing you how simple it is to make a really fast, awesome looking little diorama base for some scatter terrain using some of the WizKids terrain. And this is a little bit of Mantic Games as well. so. We've got a bit of both worlds here. 
Mm. So let's just add, add in these little rocks because we can sculpt them and make them a little bit nicer. And what we'll do is add that one there and one just there and that'll keep that tree, tree in place and it'll blend it in once I've added the gravel at a later date. Okay, so now we have our little crafting tool. Now we start smoothing everything out and giving it a better rock shape and some sharp edges. So we're just going up with our crafting tool and making a nice edge to the rocks and smoothing out the rocks and just making them look like rocks. <laughs> it's rocking. <laughs> and as we get closer to the middle, what we'll do is we'll continue some little steps there. You can see the little steps. What we're going to try and do is we'll continue down. We'll continue down with those steps. We'll just keep going down. Just tiny little steps. So the steps are just I'm just making it so the steps go all the way down to the actual base of the miniature and it just adds a little bit of extra um, and makes it makes that pull look um, it makes it stand out a little bit more so all we're doing is just keeping the box going down and we can just remove the clay as we go and by using the water we can sculpt it very nicely Good. So we've got a little stairway going up to the pool. Now what we can do there is we can just add a little rock to the other side. Just like so. And then we can add some water to that. So all we're doing is going around all these rocks and just making them all look more natural ready for when it dries and then we can paint it all grey and get some black ink wash over them and some nice dry brushing and you'll end up with a beautiful looking scatter terrain and an objective marker as well for your games
Um, Philippe's, um, Philippe won't be streaming after my stream tonight. His uh, son isn't very well. Um, so loads of love uh, to Philippe. Uh, so he's looking after his son tonight. And so I'll just let you know that uh, he will not be streaming after me today. Coming on very nicely. Hello, Mokai. Hello, Nafe. Um, I, I don't forget if you want to have. That uh, free miniature today, uh, because every every Monday and, and every Thursday, uh, on every Thursday I'll be adding a WizKids miniature to someone's box, and every Monday I'll be adding um, a free miniature to someone's box. Um, so all you need to do in chat is add, um, I want free, I want the free mini. <laughs> give me no, give me the mini, give me the mini. There we are. Give me the mini. So just type in give me the mini or give me the mini and uh, Claire will do a roll on the little machine at the end of the show um, to say who the winner is. Now the comp the little uh, prize is for patrons on a painting tier um, and I do apologise for anybody on a lower tier in the Goblin Army but I honestly cannot afford to post the minis everywhere. It would absolutely cost me a fortune. Um, this way I can actually give the miniatures away in the boxes as they are sent. That's the one. Give me the mini. Give me the mini. Give me the mini. <laughs> now the WizKids miniature will be um, uh, a random, random WizKids miniature. Uh, same as same with the Reaper miniatures. It'll be a random Reaper miniature. Uh, with the WizKids miniature, um, it might be painted. It might not be painted. Um, it could be a small miniature. It could be a large miniature. Um, it'll be a random, a random prize. But it'll be added to your boxes once they are sent in the next posting cycle. Um, I want to thank everybody as well for um, sticking with me uh, in the last in the last year or so because of this COVID. Things have been very, very difficult for everybody. I know that. Um, and my job does rely totally on your support. Um, so it isn't an easy thing uh, to rely on people to pay your, pay your wages, as you say. Um, but you have been. And obviously that means you like what I'm doing. Um, so that gives me huge confidence. So as you can see, uh, you've only spent a few minutes really doing this, uh, what, 10, 15 minutes? Um, and you can see where this is going. Um, it's going to look absolutely fab once it's done. Um, this tree will be stuck onto here. So this will be this one so far. And of course, we'll have the little gargoyles in their little places. Over there, going to be in there. Is it that way around? Could be. This one goes over here. And let's get our little man. So you can see where this is going. 
um, and you can see how just by adding a little bit of terrain and adding some scattered terrain uh, this was a very simple build um, but once that is oops, once that is all dry and I've added the gravel to the base um, it will really start to pop and look fantastic um, but this is just a simple way to make a very basic little scatter terrain using some of those uh, uh, WizKids Whisk miniatures and the uh, Mantic Games trees. Okay, so let's let's see if we can get the uh, let's see what time it is. Yeah, we're doing fine. So what I want to show you as well is we'll do the scatter terrain. Um, we'll do the rubbled rubbled city, or as you could call it, a rubbled village. Um, so what we'll do here is just to help out. I think what I'll do is I'll stick this on first um, because I'm going to keep this low. This will just be a basic scatter terrain rubble. Like I say, you can buy all these little um, MDF boards from eBay. You can get like packs of 10, 25, and they're really dirt cheap to buy. So I'm just um, going to see, I'm just using some liquid super glue and we're just going to stick this into place just to stop it from moving around um, and we can work our way around the base then prices went up recently due to wood shortages all oh, right oh i bought i got um naif i got uh, packs and packs of these i bought them years ago um, I, I'm terrible for mass buying in bulk to uh, save myself a few pennies. <laughs> but as um, scattered terrain is perfect um, because of the shape as well, uh, because of the nice little round shape, they can just fit on your table anywhere. It's a very simple thing. Okay, the bits we have are from, like I say, Hurst Arts. We got some bricks. We got some goodies here. We got some uh, middle side bits, and they, they kind of match in with the type of architecture that we've got on our miniature. So again, we'll be using our clay. And we'll be using the clay to make rubble piles, extra rubble piles around the rubble pile that's already there. So we're just gonna push this into there. And we're just adding some more to the side. A little bit more clay. At the front. Once again, I'll remind you that once this clay has dry, it will come away from the base. So what you need to do is you need to re-stick it back to the base using PVA glue. That works perfect. Um, and then you can just do your add, add, add your rest of the items. Now, what we got here is a nice little bit chunk there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just chuck that in, squish it in it's on an angle. So it kind of blends in with the rest of the architecture and the rubble. Um, we're going to have a few bricks. Uh, we've got these little tiny little bricks i'm just going to snap a few in half and we're going to start dotting them around this just this will just give us a little rubble effect going around now this is an absolute simple you couldn't ask for a simpler way to make a rubble base now you can do this without the need for the whiz kids miniature but um i just like to add a little bit more to all my miniatures and um, we've got a little crate there so we can have we can have a little crate just kind of plonked around just dotted around that could be have a little hidden artifact or a treasure we've got another little box here a little box we're going to squish that one in as well like so um these ones are a little bit too big i think and i can't break them yes i can 
Okay, so we've got a couple of rubble ends here, so we're going to stick one in there. And we're just going to have one going like so. Okay, and then all we need to do is add some more little bricks here and there. Okay, perfect. Now what we need to do is add some, a little bit of texture going around. So I'm going to use this end of the crafting stick and we're just going to slowly push in with that end there all over the clay and this will give us a nice effect to the clay and make it blend in with this actual part there. Let's see, just get closer. Okay. So all we're doing, a little bit of water, and we're just pushing this in, and it'll look exactly the same as what we've got on the Whiz Kids base just there. Cookies? What's that about cookies? <laughs> cookies? I've forgotten the taste of cookies. It's been it's been over two days since I've had a cookie. Like I say, I can't show you these painted today, uh, but hopefully you'll get the gist of how this base will look once I've added that sand and gravel and then painted it all grey. Um, it makes a perfect little um, rubble piles or ruined city or whatever, village. Perfect for your games, of course. I mean, it doesn't have to be for just Dungeons and Dragons. You can use it for uh, Warhammer or anything. Uh, Kings of War. Vanguard. There's so many games that use... Um, that use a board game system now. Um, and they use a one-inch grid, so perfect for that as well. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Goblin King, I know, right? So there we are. That's how simple it is. Um, I've added texture now to the clay. And I've added all the little bits to the base. Once I add the sand, once I add the sand, that will really uh, come to life as well. Uh, but I'll have to wait until all that has dried, of course. Let's move back to this one, just to show you. So what we got here is there we are. So what we got here is the large pool, and we've got the little rubble set from the pools and pillars set. 
um, and that's a very fast way to make two very fast scatter terrains for your tabletops. Like I say, it'll take 24 to 48 hours for the clay to dry, um, and then I'll add sand to all these bases. Um, and of course, then they'll be painted gray, highlighted. And of course, when I do the YouTube video, I'll show you the two bases completely finished with a 360. So let's go and take another quick look at the pillars. Um, I think we've still got plenty of time. Yeah. And I'll put those two aside for now. Okay, so these are our little pillars. Um, now, I don't really need to show you how to paint a pillar grey and add black ink wash, but what I will do is I'll quickly show you how to paint these little flames. Um, and we'll try two different ways of painting the flames. Um, I've got, still got clay all over me. Um, there's two ways we can paint these little flames. Let me get some more focus. And back and forward is focus all night long. Drives me crazy. There you go. No, come back. There you go. So these are tiny little braziers. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Is it braziers? That sounds, isn't that, isn't that what a woman wears? That's a bra, isn't it? <laughs> so what we got, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna paint one with my little mixture of, uh, so it stays clear, and one will just paint uh, as a normal flame. Um, and that will be perfect for today's show. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get some white. This is some dragon white, very strong, bright white. Give that a quick mix up. Oop, timber. So what we'll do is one of these we shall paint just normal. And um, we'll paint over the plastic. Uh, white so we're just going to add all this beautiful white and it's, uh, it's because with the white underneath it pushes out our ink wash that we add in a minute it's a very simple process and of course everybody who knows me now will know that I'll be using that contrast the yellow from games workshop that give that flame effect and it works at a treat um, it is one of the best it's one of the best things um, in many years to come out of games workshop in my opinion I don't know if that'll dry in time but we'll leave that there Okie dokie. Now, for this tiny little one here, what we're going to do is add um, some yellow ink wash. If we can find the yellow ink wash. Amarillo. Amarillo. One second. Nope. No, we'll have to use the we'll have to use the same effect. Um, this is the contrast paint that I'm talking about for flames. Um, it's absolutely amazing. It just what it does it gives um, an orange and a yellow to the same effect. I'll give that a good mix in the old vortex, in my warthog. Now what we do is. We've got some nice uh, satin acrylic varnish. Um, so all I'm going to do is add a tiny bit to my palette there. Let's see if we can move this across. There, so it's just, just there. Now, if you want to keep the clear effect, what we're going to do is just going to add some of this contrast paint to the crystal, to the satin varnish. Because what will happen is once I mix that in, um, 
that will dry onto that will dry onto our plastic the clear plastic and it will go translucent so what will happen is you'll still get that same effect but instead of it being the clear you're going to get a nice yellow effect now I did this on a show the other day with my with my green and it did work <laughs> it did work so all we do is we just add this now to our flames now what happens is this will dry and go and stay a beautiful clear effect like the plastic is and you can use this for your magic items and everything else now it will take a while for that to dry and what will happen is that will dry crystal clear and you'll be able to see straight through it like it gets exactly the same as it was but this time it's yellow so that's the way you change the color of translucent plastic just add ink wash to a varnish uh, I found that the satin varnish seems to work best um, and that, that let that dry and then you'll keep that translucent effect to all your plastic but you can change the colors by doing that with your paints might as well do these ones while that white's drying so once again we just paint all these little ones see if I get a bit more focus again so you can see what I'm doing a bit better so this is just satin varnish mixed in with that yellow ink wash and it goes on very nicely um, and it will dry clear now it's a little bit misty at the minute because the um, varnish is a white varnish but what happens is once that's dry it'll go crystal clear and then it will go translucent again but you can always see it's still translucent as it is Here we are. That's how, that's how simple way to do some crystal looking flames. Um, I don't think this is dry yet. Nope. Let's see if we can. What we'll do is we'll add the yellow. Oh, that's not the one I wanted to use. One second. And all we're doing is we're adding, this time we're adding that same ink wash but directly over the white and this will give us um, an orange and a yellow effect and it's a very super fast and easy way to get some beautiful looking flames on your mini so you have two different options there you can either do the flames like so uh, it's very fast and simple just by using that um, ink wash it gives the dark orange in the recesses and then it goes light towards the top which works really well or you can use the varnish effect to give yourself um, a more crystally effect for your flames if you don't if you want to keep that translucent effect and that this also works on all magical items as well 